in the faraway land of IoT, where fitness trackers run free and heart monitors tick, tick, tick. Power reigns supreme. Either you follow the rules, keep those currents down, and your battery safe and sound, or you might just find yourself on the bottom side of a house. And nobody wants that. To find your way out of this mysterious world of always-on sensors and tiny power budgets, you could try a yellow brick road, or you could get yourself some kind of Bluetooth low-energy-enabled navigation. But designing that perfect Bluetooth module can be a quite squirrely endeavor indeed. You have to collect the right components along your journey or your market window balloon may just fly away. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Fantastical, wizardly analogies aside, Bluetooth LE is showing up in all kinds of applications these days. Let's chat with Stephen Dean of On Semiconductor about the latest solutions for integrating Bluetooth low energy into your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about On Semiconductor's Bluetooth Low Energy Solutions. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Good to be here, Amelia. Happy to be here. Okay, we're here to talk about On Semiconductor's new Bluetooth Low Energy. So let's jump right in. What would be some of the key features and benefits that would interest me in this new RSL10 product family? Well, that's a fair question. This happens to be the very first BLE 5.0 certified radio SOC, very first in the industry, so that's a big deal we're leading. It is the industry's lowest power Bluetooth low energy device. I would say that it's the industry's lowest deep sleep current device, industry's lowest RX power device. Voltage range from 1.1 to 3.3 volts, and it's a small device. It's got a wafer scale package that's 5.5 millimeters square, and then it's also offered in a 48 pin QFN. You get the industry's lowest power, and you get a very small package to come along with that. Okay, great. Low power is what we're all about. So, Stephen, how low is low in comparison to the competition out there? Sure. The competition out there is hidden a bit on this next slide. You can see the small green dot in the lower left. That's the On Semiconductor RSL10 product. A couple of key points to pull out in this slide, Amelia, is the bubble size is a big deal. So the bubble size shows the deep sleep mode power in total. So you can see that our bubble is very small. You're looking at 62.5 nanowatts deep sleep current, 7 milliwatts RX power, and 11.1 milliwatts on the transmit side. So very competitive. Very cool. All right, let's get under the hood. What's inside these puppies? Yeah, this shows the block diagram. So the top blue box on the right side of this block diagram is the baseband controller. So that's a Bluetooth 5.0 compatible radio. The block below that is a low power 32-bit DSP commonly used in mathematic routines, whatnot. And then the blue box below that would be the ARM Cortex-M3 processor. You can see below that the various interfaces, standard SPI interface, GPIO, UART, that would be expected. We do have an onboard A to D converter for gathering analog real-world signals from the outside. And of course, the power management and all the control on that you'd expect. Okay, so you've got the ARM Cortex-M3. Why did you go with that core? And what are some of the high-level specs for that core? Sure, the ARM Cortex M3 is one of those common cores that oftentimes customers embrace. It's one of the more common ones. And, and so we wanted to pick something that the customers would be familiar with so that they could avert any unnecessary invention and just use what they know. So that's primarily why the ARM Cortex M3 was used, but it's also a great core in that it's ultra low power and offers some very nice features, such as in this case, we've got 384 kilobytes of flash. The Bluetooth stack actually uses only 128 kilobytes, so Amelia, you or the customer can build your application on the balance of that. It also offers 32 kilobytes of RAM, 4 kilobytes of ROM, as you'd expect, development in C, max clock of 48 megahertz in this case. Okay, got it. And Bluetooth is a standard, so what's the story with certification with this family? 
Sure. We've been through the FCC and Etsy compliance, and we've confirmed that. Conducted power, EMI, interference, total emission, et cetera. So we've got a green light for that. And, of course, we offer several profiles that have been certified as well, Bluetooth 5.0. All right. And speaking of profiles, it seems like there are about a billion applications for Bluetooth, and most of them have different profiles. What do you support? There are about a billion profiles, it seems. We support a lot of those, and there's more being added every week. Some of the typical ones, as you could imagine, in a use case such as a low-power BLE device like this, wearable kinds of applications, so heart rate monitoring, health thermometer, blood pressure, blood glucose monitor, various alert notifications, cycling speed, cycling power. And then we have some wireless charging protocols as well. All right, let's say I design this into my system. What's the upgrade situation look like? What if I want to upgrade the firmware and I have products in the field already? That's one of the areas where the RSL10 product family shines. So we offer a firmware over the air update capability. So we accommodate that on the on-chip flash. So if you've got a product out in the field, you need to update the firmware, you have that capability with the RSL10. Very cool. Now let's jump on over to the development environment. What tools do I get to help me get my design done? Sure, we offer the integrated development environment, IDE for the RSL10, includes all the Bluetooth protocol stacks, all the sample code, their sample code being added to that weekly, all the libraries and documentation. You get the ARM Cortex M3 processor development GNU tool chain, and then of course Eclipse development toolkit, which is very common in these applications. And then as far as the hardware goes, you certainly get the development board, and then we'll have a USB dongle coming later in Q4. Great. Okay, Stephen, I am all about dev boards. What kind of kits do I need to get this party started? Sure. So the RSL10 evaluation board is really your Kickstarter in all this. Beyond that, though, something that I really need to mention is that we're becoming much more solutions oriented. The IoT development kit was recently kicked off. It's basically a complete hardware and software framework. There is the RSL10 Bluetooth Low Energy Shield available for that as well, so you can build your system. We have various sensors available, PIR motion sensors, ambient light sensors, touch proximity sensors, and as far as the actuation side, we have stepper motor drive, shield boards, LED and ballast, heart rate monitoring, and other biometric monitoring boards available for this IoT development kit as well. Very cool. And what documentation is available for my development? Yep. The documentation you would expect, certainly the getting started guide, evaluation board manual, hardware, firmware, reference manuals, flash loader, software development toolkit, interface specs, quick reference guide for the ARM Cortex M3, and then all the sample code and sample code readme files. All right. What does the family look like now, Stephen? And what's the roadmap looking like going forward in the future? Sure. This roadmap is not all telling, but it shows certainly the package development a little bit over time. The USB dongle again available later in Q4. We talked about the wafer level chip scale package and the QFN being available in 48 lead. We are going to be offering in the near future products that will be serving various market segments beyond consumer, beyond standard industrial. So look for that. So more to come. Sure. Okay, great. Do you have any examples of some applications where this solution has been used? Sure. Yeah, I wanted to show a couple of examples of a typical success story or use case so that you could really understand where we're seeing some of the traction today. In one application, there's a medical implantable device, such as a cardiac pacemaker or an implantable cardiac defibrillator. The customer needed a next-generation medical-grade, ultra-low-power radio to replace their mix band radio. Now, Mixband is medical implantable communication systems. It's a 403 to 405 megahertz band that's been used in place for probably about 20 years now. So moving away from a very custom proprietary protocol mix band to a ubiquitous Bluetooth low energy band. So that's what they wanted. The challenge there is this is implantable. Battery life is everything. Battery life equates to real life. 
So you've got to be really careful power consumption wise. So the main point to this is the RSL10 product family is low enough power to actually be used in an implantable device. So that's what's very cool about this particular application. Wow, okay, cool. What else have you got? Well, it's been used in smart home applications, really any IoT or IoT edge node application. In this case, smart home, customer needed a reliable, low-cost smartphone remote control, basically, for an air conditioning product. So they turned to On Semiconductor, found the RSL10 product family, and what we offered there was appealing to them. We had a lot of local FAE, field application engineering support, and remote application engineering support, and helped them build their product. In this case, it's more of a support story. Great, okay, um, anything else? So one that's probably the coolest application that we've served so far to date is one of energy harvesting. A customer came to us and needed an ultra-low power BLE solution for lighting control. Their objective was to eliminate the copper wiring to a typical home or even industrial light switch. And we came up with a solution using the RSL10 with an energy harvester to actually harvest energy from the motion of the light switch moving on or off. And so they're able to put this switch anywhere without any power going to it at all, no battery whatsoever. So if you could imagine the cost savings and the time saving to this customer, it's really pretty amazing. Fantastic, Stephen. This has been super cool. Can you recap your main points for me, please? Sure. Well, you can see in front of you the various benefits that we've talked about briefly here today. Certainly, the RSL10 is an on-semiconductor corporate leadership product offering those benefits. The call to action really is visit us at Mauser or at onsemi.com. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me today, Stephen, and talking about Bluetooth low energy. You're welcome, Amelia. Thank you very much. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find out more information about On Semiconductor's Bluetooth Low Energy Solutions. For Chalk Talk, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal or check out YouTube, keyword EE Journal.